Hey there, I think you also heard of AI. Well, in today's video, I'm going to show you how four AI tools can actually help you become a lot better in building games, specifically in games like Planet Zoo, Planet Coaster, City Skylines, Minecraft, and so on and so forth. You will see how I made this with the help of AI, but let's write just into it, right, shall we? Well, number one is uh, pretty easy. We are here in ChatGPT. Don't let yourself be confused by the plus. I got the plus version. You can do it in the free version. I'm going to show you actually how you do that with the Bing browser as well, but more about that later. So the first thing I did before I really wanted to start with the whole thing was I just typed in a very simple command. Let me just quickly show you what I did. So the first thing I did is I basically just said, Help me design a sea lion habitat. Can you outline some steps? How can I come up with a great design idea for a real zoo habitat? That was the first prompt I gave it and uh, you can see that they really started to give me a lot of um, steps to follow. That was very obvious. I think I could have come up with that pretty simple myself. So I was like, okay, can you please do one and two your own and just show me the results? I was too lazy to do anything. So basically it gave me a good research about sea lions in general and also it determined the space I was needing. However, um, this shows how you have to work with AI to get to the best result. Um, it did show, show me some general results, but not exactly what I wanted from it. So it, for example, said to me, yeah, the habitat should be located in an area with good access to the water and sunlight. Well, thank you, Captain Obvious. And also the habitat should be large enough to provide an ample swimming and playing space for the sea lions. That is all good, but it's not really exactly what we need to be better in the game to be better in building. So I asked it, okay, can you be a bit more precise? And it came up with the um, association of zoos and aquarium, what we also need, you know, because that's what we are using all the time anyways. And it tell, told me we need 450 square meters of land and also 800 square meters of water. And then it also gave me a little bit of a guideline what to do and what to not. And now I asked it even more, can you give me five examples of real life zoos that have exactly this? So you can see I built the entire research upon what I've already said. So these five examples are obviously already keeping into consideration or keeping in mind what we have discussed over here. So you don't forget this. It's very good to get uh, inspiration. Now, I don't show you all the thing, but what I will show you is that after a while, I just um, gave it the task to give me some prompts to have a Google search request for exactly these aquariums. And so, for example, Sun, uh, SeaWorld San Diego, for example, just click on the link it provides you with and boom, there you go. You get the habitat, you get this wonderful lovely little inspiration. You can do this with all the other ones. This is the one in uh, Georgia and we've got the Monterey. And then you can see all the different habitats in front of you without uh, you having to search for that. And this is a very handy indeed because this way you can get all of this. Now, a little bit later, I did something else, but more about this in a bit because that is step two of our process. Okay, now I had a very broad idea of what I wanted to do. It gave me an idea on which coastal uh, area we want to be. It told me something about the vegetation vegetation, it said me something about the water filtration and so on and so forth. However, this is not visual. This is all text-based and you can't really do anything visual with it. To be more visual, I have a second AI tool that is super powerful in order to get yourself inspiration and also a little bit of a guideline how to do stuff. Now let's jump into Adobe Firefly or Adobe Firefly. Now, there are two uh, different things to do. So first of all, you've got the text to image, basically just as mid journey. I will say though, mid journey is better, but I'm not doing this in this video because first of all, um, if you have the Adobe Cloud anyways, you will have access to Adobe Fly Firefly if you're registered for that. So it is for free in a way because it's in the price. So that's a good one. Um, but it also has access only to the Adobe um, library, which is copyright why it's a little bit better, I guess, because Midjourney is still not 100% clarified what is going on, especially when you type in a certain artist style. So I'm a little bit on a split there, but um, in general, I'm a big fan of this because it gives you a little bit of uh, inspiration. Now, what we are going to do, first of all, is text to image. We are going to do the text effects in a bit. We will need this for the thumbnail of today's video. So you have seen that already. Maybe you don't remember, but you'll see in a bit. Now let's go into text to image. What, what that does basically is pretty simple. I'm just gonna find a uh, first very obvious one to you. Show me a camel that plays a computer game comic style. Um, the camel wears a headband. Not sure if that 
I've never done that. Let's see what, what it comes up with. Um, so this is just a very easy prompt and then it just generates some images out of that. There you go. You've got a camel. It just kind of messed up some of the things, but I love the one with the Game Boy over here. Um, seems to be headband, not the right word. But what we want to do is to continue our example with the C line. Now I have a couple of prompts that may help you. So the first thing obviously is sh um, an aerial photography of a sea lion habitat. That's pretty simple. And then you just change the style to this. And I would also recommend to go to widescreen just to have something like that. And then it just again generates some images for you. The good thing is, and I'm gonna tell you while this is booting and loading, um, I'm gonna tell you why this is very interesting for you. So first of all, these are real life habitats now. That makes sense because I told it habitat and not zoo habitat or enclosure. Um, but it helps you to specify what types of rocks, what types of watercolor, what types of plants you may be using, how the layout is, and this gives you already a pretty nice idea. So the cool bit about this is it just basically, this is an AI, so the AI will basically go and take things that are most likely to provide the best answer to you. So it will go most likely into these things that exist in the real world. So if you wanna become better, you use the things that already exist and the more they exist, people will, um, kind of feel as this is real because you have used certain things. That makes just sense. Now you can obviously just change that to enclosure and say zoo enclosure and see what the AI comes up with then. <clears throat> it's rather simple, just a couple of prompt changes and then you will get a different result out of it. The good bit about the different result is that you get a couple of uh, architectural inspiration over here. Um, it definitely is not <laughs> animal friendly as you can tell and it doesn't really get the proportions right but that should not be our problem it's really just about the feeling you can see ponds and pools and how like path layouts are and maybe some general structures and stuff that is really cool so you could also go further and say okay well um a very nice architectural design of an indoor pool in a zoo, for example, super realistic architecture, photography, something like that to just make it uh, nicer, photography and so on, architecture. I hope that this was written correctly um, because this is very picky with the language, but I hope it works. Um, this is also one of the strengths of Midjourney. Basically typos are dealt with pretty easily in Adobe Firefly or Adobe Firefly, you have to be a bit more uh, precise with what you do. But there you go. Um, obviously, these are not like habitats for animals, but um, you get some architectural uh, inspiration out of that. So you can just easily go in and use one of these things um, for a zoo. And in a zoo, now you could also do for sea lions and do that again, you know, very simple, very effective. You can do some research with that without going to Google and have to, you know, you always have to check if that's the right one, is it the right picture, blah, 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 and so on. Now you can see there's also putting the animal in. That is very similar to what we've just saw, uh, seen, but you can get the idea. And you can also say, hey, you know what? I, I like this one. Show me similar ones to this one. So you go to similar and then it just creates similar images based on this one specifically, if you like the, I don't know, architectural style of it or not. Um, as I said, this is all just inspiration. Nothing of this is uh, in particular important when it comes to the actual structure you build. You will still have to have the ability to build, but you can also obviously go in and search for more realistic versions. I think you got the idea. Um, <clears throat> now I'm going to show you a second thing. We have now defined the habitat size. We have defined what types of, uh, you know, material you want to use. We have defined how the architecture could look. We've defined how the layout could be. But now there's more about the foliage or the vegetation you want to use. Now, for my specific case, I wanted to have it located in Sicily. Now, what I did is um, I put something in here, for example, like a super realistic nature, for, let's not say nature, let's say landscape photography of a Sicilian lake. Well, there you go. And then you will also get a very nice idea of how a Sicilian lake could look if you want to have this as a 
for example, have a, have a baseline. And there you go, you get this Sicilian lake, you can see some, you know, sand with a couple of um, grass thingies in, and then you've got uh, the color of the water you want to use. You can see some of the um, stones and stuff on the side, how they're looking like the overall. But this for me is a little bit too big and too wide and what like that. So um, off, and I'm gonna off Sicilian plants, and I'm gonna say off, off typical, Sicilian plants and now it should give me a bit more of an idea. Well, actually what I'm not doing over here I'm not saving any of these you should do so you should go down download these things put them in a folder You've got all the inspiration for ya. That makes sense. There you go. Look at that now You get a very nice picture of uh, typical Sicilian foliage and you can uh, also specify um, Now you can say flowers for example and uh, see what this comes up with flowers and this way you can make yourself uh, get closer and closer to all the the materials you will need. So um, one last example I'm going to show you in Bing actually is how you can deal then with the layout. But more about that in a second. So as you can see, now I defined the flowers. All good. I said also there is a second way we can use Adobe Firefly. We're gonna do this real quick. We're gonna go all the way, way uh, all the way back to Adobe Firefly, and now we use the text effects. Now text effects are very fun too because you can now define a text. For me, for example, I could have used Sicily because that is where we go, and then a pattern of typical Sicilian flowers. And then you hit enter and you can see there's already outline of the word Sicily and what it will create now is a wonderful flower-esque as you can see pattern uh, for the word Sicily and then you have got a wonderful wording but that's not what we want I want uh, something like this AI and then we say close up of electronic chips electronic chips and connectors dramatic lighting um, super close up, something like this. And let's see what then the AI comes up with. You can see I've done this a couple of times already. So you get an idea what you want. Um, and now you can also define the different style down here. I think this one's pretty promising. Uh, at least it looks like. Um, so let me just quickly see if that works. There you go, yeah, that looks fine. That looks really cool, or that one. I'm not sure which one of those I'm gonna take, but you can see this now gives you a very cool way of defining your own um, thumbnail type. I think this is kind of cool, but I think I'm gonna go with this one. I'm gonna tag that later, because we have to go now to a different tool, and that is NVIDIA Canvas. This one is for free, you can try it. I believe you have to have a certain graphics card, but they add the list of graphics card um, all the way. But what you can do in here is pretty much doodle. I will keep this very short, so you just get the idea. But on the right hand side, you've got a palette of different materials you can use. And on the left hand side, this is where you wanna paint. And on the right hand side, this is where the image is generated. Down here, you've got a different style. I'm gonna go with this style first. This is the um, style I wanna have. And then you can also change a couple of variations in here. I'm not sure which one is the best, we will test later. But basically, just to show you how it works, you can choose one of these materials. I'm gonna go to clouds real quick and I'm gonna paint like a cloud in the middle here. There you go. And you will see there is a cloud painted. If you wanna have like a smaller one here, smaller one there, that's just how it works, okay? It generates that. What we want to do now is we want to generate a picture that resembles the materials we want to use. So first of all, we are going to start with a little bit of the sea. And we're going to paint this as like a little, this is going to be the sea, okay? So this is where our wonderful animals can live in. Let's just make that a little bit of a bigger water body that is just in here, okay? So very simple. Um, it just is confused right now, but we are going to work our way there. We are then going to have, um, for example, a stone wall that we can put right in front of here. So just put the stone wall right in front and you can see now it's generating. I think I don't like the style at all. Let's see if we can get a bit more to daylight. I think that daylight is better over here. There you go. And then you just keep on painting. We can also have like different types. You can make it bigger or smaller. I'm just gonna make that bigger real quick. Just make sure that there's a stone wall here. So there you go. And it generates the stone wall. You can see it will understand after a while. This looks like a mountain right now and the sea is behind. Um, and the more you build, it will understand that you want something else. So um, I do wanna have something like, is there, I think we have also sand. Yeah, sand is also good. So we can put sand all the way around here now because they want sand. Just make them like a little bay here too. So there you go. 
and then you can see what does this image create. I mean, sometimes it is confused as you can see over here, but now you can already tell that in the middle there is like a little pond already created. Um, maybe we're just gonna put sand over here in the front even more, that it understands better. And then you can also start painting like some trees in here. So it also changes then the overall feeling of it. And then we can also put some gravel here in front, like there, you know. Um, we can have some grass just put some grass here and there and what I find very helpful about this is you can generate landscape images so this will give you a good feeling of what you want to do so I want to have some flowers down the side here as well just paint the flowers here so it gets a little more flowery and you have to just you know you can just doodle around until you have something that you like so sometimes it just creates something very nice looking sometimes you have to be a bit more precise you could also go in with river instead of uh, instead of the sea and it changes the type of water if you just do that like so you can also make sure there's the river going and then you say oh you know I just want to have the river here too and you can see this way you create certain things like that you can obviously also have uh, grass so that one over here is grass so we can make this all more grassy and then it just creates this wonderful plane and this way you can easily just doodle real quick a scene that you can take as inspiration for your own habitat as well it doesn't work with all the habitats but it just gives you a good idea of what you want to do you can also have some mountains in the background and so on and so forth i'm not going to go too much into it to keep the video reasonably long now the last thing i want to show you is the bing uh, stuff over here because this is what you want to new, uh, use. This one is the um, AI from ChatGPT within the internet search of Bing. Unfortunately, I couldn't change it to English, so I can ask it in English anyways. The one thing I can do now is I can go, I'm, I'm just going to the center because that's the best thing you, uh, you want to go also to the center. I like this option the most. Now, what you can do now is um, show me five examples of enrichment items of sea lions in zoos. Please also give me some images of those. And then you just ask it this way um, and you don't need to do the, the, the work yourself because now it will search for enrichment items for lees, uh, sea lions and zoos and then on it just gives you the ideas, uh, put them in and you can also see them uh, how this works. So let's see that one. I'm sorry but I kind of a text page blah blah how you find them online. Please, yeah, just tell it please give me the links for the images. And then it should actually give you the links for the images so uh, that you don't have to search for them yourself. Images of original items for sea lions and zoos, as you can tell. Um, there you go. Normally it will, there you go, exactly. Um, it will then give you some ideas where you can click and you don't have to search for yourself. It's very simple. And then you can also see, there you go, there are some images and you can see there is an image over here, for example, if we open that, this is the image and you can see some of those were the inspiration for what we have done actually in my zoo, as you can see on screen. So yeah, that's that. And uh, I think to just draw a conclusion, I just want to say that the AI tools can be very powerful powerful to realize your ideas in a very short amount of time. I mean, the video is not even 19 minutes long and we basically have generated everything we would need to build a wonderful thing. You can also do one last thing to show you the power of it. Um, I want to come up with a good street design for a suburban area in city skylines. Can you help me? I'm not sure if that works, but you can do certain things like that. You don't have to rely on your normal search. Let's see if that is something uh, where they can help me for. Certainly, here are some tips. Plan ahead, yeah, blah, 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 blah. Use grids, okay, yeah, well, it gives you some ideas now. If you're a starter, that makes actually some, some good sense. Um, but you can then also obviously go further and say, can you provide me with some example images images or videos and then you know go on like that it's it's that simple once you've once you've got the hang of it um you know um yeah okay this time it wants to just let me do the work again but you could just go in and then just try a couple of things until you are there where you are 
This is something I found super helpful in my last couple of videos. The results are pretty much self-explanatory because, well, the videos have been better than all the other ones before and um, I found it a lot more simple for me to sort my ideas. Like, I do have certainly a lot of ideas, but uh, you can also get into a brainstorming with ChatGPT, for example. If you don't have ideas, ask it to get some ideas. A certain delay designer knows what I'm talking about. She used it after I told her. She is totally hyped about this. She got a million new ideas for her zoo. So hopefully you guys can have the same for your coasters, for your cities, for your Minecraft build, for whatever you want. Thank you so much for the video, watching the video. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it was helpful for you. If it was helpful, let me know in the comments down below. And also if you want to know more about that and your thoughts on AI, let me know in the comments down below as well. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good one. Goodbye.